Hey guys, how you doing? Cigar Prince here. So we're back in North America. Check out the stash we got. I already started setting some of it up in the humidor. I started putting some of them in there. Um, I'm gonna arrange some more of them here. So we had a really successful buying trip. We got some Juan Lopez selection number twos. Uh, like I did that review a little while ago. So told you guys it was really excellent cigar, great flavor. So we got 25 of those, a cabinet of those. Uh, we got 25 uh, of the El Rey del Mundo Qua Supreme. I've already set them up in here. Um, we got some uh, Hoya de Monterey Epicure Especial that I'm gonna fit in there. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty much, I'm gonna do a little bit of, you guys following the videos know exactly what we kind of bought more or less while we were there uh, in Cuba. But I thought I'd just take this opportunity to do a little bit of a kind of a humidor tour as well. Uh, for those of you who might be interested. So come and have a look at what we have here. So pretty much after I stock these up, we've got these Juan Lopez selection number two, very tasty stick. Got a bunch of these Epicure number twos. I had a ca actually two cabinets of them just before I left, but they're like my everyday go-to smoke. So I've got six here and I've got three more under there. So about nine. And we have these Bolivar. Bellicoso Fino, my favorites. So there's about 20 in there. Smoked a bunch out of the last uh, cabinet that I got. Again, another cigar that I would smoke every day that I really love. And we've got some of these Partigas Series P number twos. Got four left, I had a box of 10. And right underneath that, we've got my absolutely, my number one cigar, my favorite cigar the Roy, Romeo and Julieta Churchills. So we've got about 12 of those left. I'm gonna go pick up some more. Unfortunately, this trip that we were there, they didn't have any, otherwise um, we were gonna pick up those and uh, Bolivar Libertadores. So some of you might be wondering, why am I stocking these cigars with the foot of the cigars facing um, the wood and not the other way, how many other people do? Um, I'm kind of testing something out. I find that when these humidity packs are in there and the cigar is kind of not been cut yet, you get all the humidity pretty much just gathering towards the end of the cigar in the last third. And I find that at that point, it kind of makes them a little bit bitter. And I've noticed with some of the cigars that they end up you know, going off at that point. So being the cigar aficionado that I am, I like to kind of take the cigar down as far as I can, and, you know, get a good idea of the flavors, unless it's one of the cigars that's really, you know, bitter or not worth smoking past like the band. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I find when I keep this at the wood, there's a less chance of the humidity gathering in that point. And instead, I get a more equal um, diffusion of humidity throughout the entire smoke rather than just getting in there and gathering at the total ends. Something I'm trying out, I'll let you guys know how it turns out. But uh, for most of these, I'm doing that. For these ones here, I haven't done that. I have like this little piece of wood from a box of an Epicure Especial in there. So th these are just those little cedar planks that are always on, uh, on boxes. I've also got a really nice cigar that I tried over there. Um, Monte Cristo Open Eagle. I love the size, love the flavor. It was very nice and smooth. Unfortunately, they didn't have any left. Uh, I'd have got some, but I still brought one back as a souvenir. There's also these Ramon Ayone, specially selected. I did a review of these a little while ago. For a little while, these were like kind of my go-to cigars in the daytime. I'd smoke them in the morning or in the afternoon after lunch. Really nice cigars, so I have a few of those left. There's uh, also this Nicaraguan or Honduran or I guess it's a mix of different types of uh, tobacco, including Dominican, Honduran, Nicaraguan, I believe. This is a Rocky Patel Vintage 1990. I did a review for this a little while ago. I picked up a few. Um, it's a very strong cigar, so I'm kind of testing out, leaving it in the humidor for a little while and seeing how it mellows out. Probably not gonna smoke this one for maybe a couple of years or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I have in here right now. So this is what the box of El Rey del Mundo looks like, Qua Supreme. It's a very cool box. It's got like these medals and stuff that they received. 
Uh, interesting note, these used to actually be in the 1930s, 40s, up until the 60s or 70s. They used to be the Cohiba of that time. They were like the most expensive cigars that you could get. And so they, they had quite a cult following, but for some weird reason, somewhere along the 70s, they kind of dropped off in popularity. Might have had something to do with the revolution, availability, or maybe just changing tastes. Um, so I like them. I picked it up. There's a little bit of a honeyed flavor in them. We did a review for it. You guys can check that out on the channel. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to upload it, but if I do have a link for it, I'll put it in the description. Uh, but very nice cigar, very nice, smooth, not overly strong it seems to give every smoker what they're looking for there's a little bit of sweetness there's a little bit of uh, coffee and all that kind of stuff and it has varying strengths i actually found that they're stronger at the beginning they get mellow in uh, the middle and then suddenly towards the end they end up getting significantly stronger so that was nice that was different juan lopez box looks like this selection number two box day on these quite young they're like june 2018 so been sitting there for about a year they're cool it's a partigas series p number two box right here comes with a box of 10. um yeah so pretty much that's it pick this up uh in cuba from the habanos lcdh store needed a cutter there didn't want to take one of these fancy ones over there because it's just kind of too much to carry around but this is the colibri v cut i'll do a review of this a little later and show you guys kind of what I think about how to use it. This one has a V cut on the front and has a straight cut on the back. I like it, works really well. So I'm gonna get this stuff stocked up and uh, I'll hit you guys back with the, once it's done. But you guys can have a look at this. This is my favorite. Oh, to Monterey Epicure number two. So just check out the coloring on this one. I was really impressed when we saw it at the store there. Got the ladies to open up a bunch of boxes. Look at the color on those. Beautiful, nice construction, nice color. Now I'll show you guys a, a comparison. This is a box from uh, early 2017 look at the coloration on that look at the difference this here was from a box that was a 2018 model year it's kind of smoother milk chocolate looking look at how dark these ones are so i'm really looking forward to smoking these um i'll let you guys know i'll probably do a follow-up review and let you guys know how they are uh, so i'm going to get all these fit in here a little bit of uh therapy for me <laughs> As, as it is with a lot of other cigar smokers, you open up your humidor, you rearrange stuff. Your family thinks you're nuts because you just keep on moving around sticks, but <laughs> it ends up, uh, you gotta fit all this stuff in and make sure there's enough air reaching them all and all those little weird idiosyncrasies that cigar, cigar smokers have. You're just, you know, setting things up the way you like. So I'll do that and I'll let you guys know. I'll show you the end result. I might not keep these in here. I'm, I think sometimes I prefer just leaving them either in a bag with a humidity pack or, you know, putting them either at like a local cigar locker. Just because I feel some, sometimes, just kind of a theory I'm testing out. Sometimes I feel like the, the flavor in the cigars ends up changing depending on the type of wood. But if you store them similarly to what the LCDH stores them, there's this kind of distinct cubanist kind of like cuban flavor that you get it's kind of the same smell and flavor that you get as soon as you get out of the airport there there's that smell in the air it's kind of a smell that has a little bit of palms palm tree uh smells uh, a little bit of salt from the sea and that kind of thing i find many of them when you just pick them up and you just smoke them fresh they always have that kind of flavor fresh not meaning that they're young uh, and not aged but i mean fresh from cuba they usually have that flavor and i find sometimes that light nuance tends to kind of decrease and disappear. So just one of those little quirks. I'm gonna try it out, I'm gonna see, uh, decide what I do with these ones. Um, but yeah, they're there. Here's a box of the Epicure Especial we got. Right here. Um, if it's not too tough to open, I'll open it up. Probably gonna need a knife to pry this open, but 
here's what they look like. I think I have I have a few left over from last time that are right here. So you can have a peek at those. Those are Epicure Special. Oida Montreux. Very, very beautiful smoke. I'm yet to do a review for this. I'm going to do it soon. It's one of those cigars that has, if you find one that's not plugged or that the draw is like not too, um, you know, with, with an open draw, it ends up being one of the best cigars. Just the quality of the smoke, how elegant that smoke is, how light it is, and those flavors, everything is very finessed. It's a very luxurious cigar, a very beautiful cigar. Um, so I'll work on that. I'm gonna show you guys one other one right here, which is, I'm looking very forward to. This is the LCDH Special, and they're the Hoya de Monterey Elegantes, special edition cigar that uh, these guys make. It's a box of 10. You guys gotta check out how these look. Look at that. Beautiful. This reminds me of those cigars that, uh, you know, if any of you guys are old enough to have watched the Flintstones back in the day, <laughs> or if your kids watch the Flintstones or whatever, uh, which I doubt, they're probably on their phones these days, but if any of you remember the Flintstones from back in the day, this is a cigar the shape of cigar that you'd see like Fred Flintstone smoking when he went to his Masonic meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so the minute I saw these, I thought it was pretty damn cool. So I'm looking forward to trying these uh, very special cigars and they smell lovely. I wish I could somehow, if this thing had like an ability to show you guys what this smells like, cause I'm pretty much in heaven right now. There's like chocolate and <laughs> Nice tobacco and nuts and all sorts of flavors coming out of this thing. The nice cedar wood. Uh, but yeah, pretty much with that's, I'm gonna leave you guys with that. I'm gonna fill this baby up and uh, maybe later on I'll show you how I fit everything in. Uh, till then guys, cheers.